gout and you're on the keto diet, question is, how do I measure my uric acid? And we start right now. Hi guys, I am Dr. Pete. I'm a PhD biochemist. I was diagnosed with gout in 2016. I was diagnosed as being pre-diabetic in 2019. And this is when I started the ketogenic diet. I reversed my pre-diabetes in 52 days on the ketogenic diet and my gout is in remission. In today's video, what I'm going to teach you to do is how to monitor your uric acid using a handheld meter. I use the UA Sure uric acid meter. One of the questions that comes up when you're using these types of meters are the accuracy. How accurate are they? And I have communicated with the company that builds this meter and I understand that the readings that you get from the finger sticking on this meter are within plus or minus of one mg per deciliter of uric acid in your blood. Keep in mind that what I'm going to teach you about taking a reading off of this meter, if you were pre-diabetic or you had some sort of combined metabolic condition with gout, then more than likely you're also going to be testing your blood glucose and perhaps your ketones, which I recommend if you're on the ketogenic diet. So the basic principles that you're learning here hold up also for blood glucose and for the ketones. All right, first some quick details on this meter. I'm gonna turn it around here. You can see this green key that is at the top. When you buy the strips for this meter, they come in a box that looks like this. And inside this box will be a key. So when you get your strips, you'll open the box, you take out the green key that's in there. If the instrument that you bought came with the green key in it, you're gonna pull this out and you will put the green key that came in the box in this unit. That's how this meter is calibrated. How do we do the finger sticking? So first and form, foremost, make sure that you've created a little area for yourself. So I put down a piece of paper towel. I have my meter. I have the, the foil enclosed strip. And I have a lancing device to, to poke a hole in my finger. I have gotten a piece of tissue because what we're going to do is we're going to wipe off the first droplet of blood that we get. So I have all these things out right where I have immediate access to them. Step one is to go wash your hands. This is crucial. So you want to use a, a pretty aggressive soap. Dish soap is a good one. Really scrub your hands down and then rinse them very, very well. Then when you dry your hands, Make sure not to use a dirty towel. Okay, I just finished washing my hands. The very next step is to take and get myself a strip out of the foil package. It's easy to open them. I find tearing them straight down like that makes it easier to get the strip out. And insert my strip into the unit and set it down. All right, you should see in the screen, there's going to be a number that pops up uh, that is a reference to uh, the code, the calibration code, and there is a, a droplet of blood uh, that is now blinking. That means that the, that the meter is ready to go. So we have activated the meter. I just showed you that part of the procedure. And now what I'm going to do is take the lancet and I'm going to poke a hole in my finger. So first I cocked it. And then I usually will use my uh, middle finger and off to the side. Um, and let's just see how this goes to get a good blood droplet. All right, and then what you're gonna wanna do is just literally squeeze some blood out. Um, hopefully you can see the size of the drop. And now I'm gonna take my uh, tissue and I'm gonna wipe the first drop off of there and then generate a second drop. All right, and this is to make sure, and sometimes I'll do this two or three times, but this is to make sure that we get a clean sample of blood. And then notice I'm keeping my hands still on the surface of the table, and I'm gonna pick the unit up. 
that has the opening for the blood and then hold it down so that it touches the surface of the droplet. I think you can see the blood is up in, in the strip itself. It's filled the, the gap that's in there. And now it's just a matter of letting the meter do its work. Here is the result, and you can see that it's coming in at 7.6. Okay, so once you've acquired the uric acid number, and perhaps others with it, like blood glucose and the ketones, um, as a health coach, I advocate taking your weight, your blood pressure, the glucose, the ketones, and I do my uric acid. And I've been tracking these biomarkers now for uh, three years. And basically, I'm old school because I'm 63. I, I publish my, my numbers in, in a diary, right, in a logbook. The overarching consideration, the overall reason for measuring uric acid is because you've been diagnosed with gout. So it should make sense to you to want to know what the relationship is between the, the amount of uric acid in your blood and your daily, monthly, and even yearly existence. So let's break this down into specific considerations. Consideration number one is to understand how your uric acid fluctuates over the course of a day. Mine is high in the morning and it decreases over the course of the day and is lowest right before I eat dinner. Consideration number two, you can use this meter to test different foods. What do you do? Let's say I'm about to eat breakfast, so I measure my uric acid like I just did for you in front of the camera, and I write it down. And then I eat my breakfast. Maybe it's a few eggs. Maybe I put some bacon in there, right? And I eat that breakfast. And then I want to know what's going to happen to my uric acid, right? So I test at one hour and two hours after eating the meal. And in that way, I can see how different foods affect my uric acid. The third consideration is to collect uric acid data over the long term, right? Because hopefully you've made a decision to go on the ketogenic diet so that perhaps your gout will go into remission. So it's, it's important to track your uric acid because as I've explained in other videos, when you first go on to the ketogenic diet with a, uh, in the terms of a gout sufferer, your uric acid is going to rise. And how much does it rise? Well, if you're measuring uric acid using a meter, then you're going to know. You're going to be able to track the rise. You're also going to be able to see when, when the rise terminates and the uric acid starts coming down. And then important to you will be to see where that uric acid plateaus. My uric acid plateaued and was constant at a constant value for over a year at 8.5. This will allow you to then consider what your medical options are, right? You can talk to your, your doctor and you literally can show them the logbook, which is what I have done actually. And you can show them, I, I showed my doctor three years worth of uric acid data. And I said, this is where I'm at now. What should I do? You know, I was at the top, at the, top of the normal range. Do I go on medication or not? This is a personal choice you're going to have to make. And if you have to make that personal choice, doesn't it make sense to, to make that choice based on data? Questions or comments about what I've taught you in this video, please leave your comments below. Or you can contact me at Dr. Pete at Dr. Pete's Keto Club, club spelled with a K. If you are new to our channel, please hit the subscribe button and the bell next to it so you know when we are going to post our next video.